I'm Corbett Wall with DV Auction, here with your feeder flash for Thursday, April the 15th, brought to you in part by Epra Zero by Norbrook. It's an economical and weatherproof pour-on dewormer, approved for all classes of beef and dairy cattle with zero days meat withdrawal. For more information, go to norbrook.com. It's turnout day for your double stock pastures, uh, the Flint Hills, the Osage, that's such a, a really important part of our whole cattle industry cog in the wagon wheel that makes it go round and and I know there's a lot of other places that we turn cattle out but it is a major major grazing area and and very significant in in uh, the whole process of growing cattle and uh, so you can turn your cattle out uh, for the most part on your double stock pastures April the 15th for 90 days and uh, I tell you what that blue stem pasture they have out there it, uh, it puts it on them in a hurry, especially if you've got some hard, kind of old crop uh, calf weight yearling stalkers out there. It's unbelievable. You can just watch them explode almost literally there. But uh, uh, that's a fun time of the year, and uh, it'll be fun if you guys are going up through the, the Kansas Turnpike to kind of watch those cattle grow on both sides of the road. But uh, we continue to see a uh, very good demand for stalker types. Uh, not many of those old crops still for sale or in loose hands. Most of them have been sopped up over the last two or three months. But, but hard and long weaned uh, new crop calves uh, are still uh, highly demanded. Your feeder cattle fell off hard on Wednesday as our, as our grains uh, jumped up again really big and just uh, all of a sudden now we're, we're worried about a comparable crop to corn in, in uh, South America uh, that that's some big uh, issues to worry about it's unseasonably cool in the corn belt uh, I'm up here in northwest Missouri uh, in this week and uh, it is unseasonably cool kind of wish that I hadn't uh, switched to straw and, and that's the only one I brought but uh, it, it's uh, you know it's not going to promote uh, some early come on but uh, you know they've, they've had some moisture up here guys moods are really good about planting corn and and uh, they're going to get a ton of it in over the next two or three weeks here and uh, we should see things warm up then I know we're talking about having some uh, cooler temperatures here pretty much uh, the rest of this whole week and and uh, maybe take a while to really start warming up but uh, you know, I, th I think your your analysts and your people in Chicago are a lot more worried about this uh, corn planting than than your farmers are because they're they're getting excited to put that in. Uh, your fat cattle trade uh, started to take place late on Wednesday. Uh, we didn't really establish a price, but we are starting to see a little bit of trade and and it's your it's your wily. Uh, Iowegians and your Nebraska traders or cattle uh, sellers that are holding out tough. Of course, they're in a better position than your Southern Plains guys, but we saw uh, your, your Kansas and Texas guys start throwing in the towel uh, late on Wednesday because, uh, you know, the market uh, has been a little bit off this week on your futures, and, uh, and they're just getting a little bit worried there. Uh, we see a lot more basis jumpers in the southern plains also but you would think they would at least wait until they get a positive basis I guess uh, they're they're okay with just uh, trading out and losing and a buck or two uh, but you know if they could hold out and get a little bit more money cash they could actually make money on their trade out on their hedge there but uh, it, it's a little frustrating with the southern boys giving up the ghost uh, before your guys in the north but uh, our, our market ready supplies are a lot lighter and in, in, uh, primarily in Nebraska there so those guys are hanging tough and, and still hoping to get more money but we've seen some Southern Plains guys sell out for steady and we'll talk about that in just a second when we start talking about the fat cattle trade uh, I want to give you guys a heads up here on Monday at Platte Valley Livestock Auction in Gary, Nebraska they are going to have a special kind of a sale there they've got a rollover benefit auction for two young men on the rodeo team at Panhandle State, Hadley McCormick and Cinch Bullock, uh, they were killed in a, in a vehicle accident going to a college rodeo uh, in Garden City, Kansas. And uh, they are going to have uh, a benefit rollover auction to benefit their families. And if you guys would like to participate in that, get a hold of them there at Platte Valley 
uh, livestock auction there. You can get online, watch it on DV auction, uh, send them a message or bid on there. But call the office. They would take any type of donations there uh, because those uh, there's some families that uh, have have pretty ha pretty much had a devastating loss there, and they could sure use uh, a hand up, maybe not a handout, but a hand up. Let's talk about your board on Wednesday, April live cattle futures down 30 cents at 122.10 uh, and like I said that's still more than what our weighted average was less and quite a bit more than what the southern plains were trading uh, as a whole so uh, you know we haven't got to a positive basis yet now if we started trading uh, at steady or a higher market in the north uh, they could have a positive basis there but we're just right there June live cattle futures down 87 and a lot of this uh, downward is from long liquidations because we've gained so much uh, ground over the last several weeks and and uh, you know whenever they they get out there you know that it's a liquidation so uh, it's going back down you know that you you're basically taking a equal and opposite reaction whenever you get out so if you had a long position you'd made some money you're gonna have to sell that off to get out and it pressures the market there some but June down 87 at 120.05 going out front from there in your back months down 15 cents to down 72 but not terrible now feeder cattle were pretty rough April feeder cattle down a buck 30 at 141.15 May down a buck 90 at 145.42 you go on out from there and they were down a buck 15 to down 145 Look at those grains that I mentioned about, uh, you know, that uh, some of this weather and things going on in South America is really affecting. But, uh, you know, those things are going to jump around and it's just going to be basically a weather report here for the next three months or so on these grains. And you guys just can't hinge on that and get too excited one way or the other. But May corn up 14 cents on Wednesday, closing at 594 bushel. I, I would be surprised to see it close above six bucks a bushel. Now I could very easily do that here late this week, but I would be surprised to see it. Beans up twenty and a half at fourteen ten a bushel, and and uh, you know those are a lot higher prices than what we've been used to over the last several years. How about your fat cattle trade? Like I said, your north hasn't traded anything. Nebraska had a few loads at one ninety four. Well, hell, that's cheaper than they had last week. Not sure what it was on, on those cattle. Those cattle were reported uh, as being 80% choice or better. Now, something was amiss on those cattle. And, uh, you know, I don't know if they caught somebody sleeping or what, but that is not the established market by any means, but just a few loads in there that was reported through mandatory price reporting. Iowa didn't have anything out there. Now, Texas and Kansas, we didn't see any confirmed sales through the USDA reports. But I got uh, reports from very reliable sources, uh, including Consolidated Beef Producer Suite there, that they were trading cattle at 121. So uh, I'm not sure if they'd swung the gates and let them roll, but uh, there were significant numbers of cattle that sold in Texas and Kansas. By significant, I mean more than a thousand. Uh, you know, a pretty good swath of cattle at 121. That'd be basically steady for the most part with late week sales last week in Texas and could be steady to a little weak uh, with Kansas trade because they did see some 122, 123 in northern Kansas uh, late, late last week. But uh, that's the latest information you can get. How about box beef cutout values? We saw them slip the first couple of days of the week on choice and back up a little bit. Now we've seen new highs for this most recent rally. Choice cuts on Wednesday afternoon, 272.91, up $2.80. Select 267.31, up 77. Your slaughter, uh, decent pace, but uh, you know, these packers are so disciplined. You'd think when they're making four to six hundred dollars a head, they would just have their, their foot mashed on the throttle. But uh, they know they're going to get all the cattle anyway, and there's no need to push the market when they've got tight uh, market-ready supplies in, in particularly one area where they like to get cattle up in Nebraska. Now they've kind of got the board sorted out where, where our next out month, June, 
is trading a couple bucks back of what our spot April is. So that is not going to make uh, your, your cattle feeders hold cattle back a little bit and likely it's going to have them bring the cattle forward a little bit if they, if, uh, if they haven't already. And so that could help your packers get through this little lull in, in market ready supplies and it seems like uh, they know exactly what to do. They are far, far superior negotiators to your cattle feeders and there's not very many heads to get together right there. But 343,000 slaughtered through Wednesday this week. That's down 2,000 from last week, up 70,000 from the challenges we had with COVID shutdowns a year ago this week. Uh, what else is going on? Western video market, uh, Ellington Peak, you know, we, we uh, he got out of Cottonwood, California there and Shasta Livestock uh, closed that market. Still having sales. Western Video Market still active, still having regular sales there. Have not uh, wavered a bit. But Western Video Market having a sale on Thursday here. Be sure to get on and watch that. It's actually going to be held in Turlock, California. That's been a very, very dry area. And uh, they're going to be having a lot of replacement stock both on the video and at the regular sale that they're having at Turlock as soon as the video sale is over. You can view and bid those sales at dvauction.com, guys. Uh, be sure and get on there. They've got about 15,000 head of cattle on the Western Video Market video sale, about 5,000 head of sheep, a lot more replacement or breeding stock than what they normally have because of the dry conditions and a lot more uh, replacement or breeding stock there at Turlock for their sale uh, also due to the dry conditions. So be sure and check those sales out here today on Thursday. Let's talk about your feeder cattle markets, real-time index on DV auction late in the day on Wednesday at 142.58 down 163 uh, but your, your latest sales, the steer tracker, which is the very latest, the last 25 uh, offerings of five head or more that go into the real-time index was only 138.39. So it's on its way down pretty tough in some of your high volume sales, but some of your regional markets uh, where you have more uh, farmer feeders and, and, uh, and uh, local type demand, they sold continued to sell higher. But I'll give you some uh, evidence of that. OKC West, El Reno, Oklahoma. Uh, the government was a little late getting that uh, that full report out, but uh, with over 7,000 head on offer, I looked on your automated market report from Cattle Market Central. Sure appeared that your feeder cattle were selling two to as much as five dollars lower. And uh, Tuesday on your steer calves, they were steady to a couple bucks higher on those that were suitable to turn out. Heifer calves one to three dollars lower but noticeably light demand on your unweaned soft new crop calves. How about winter livestock Dodge City, Kansas, 2,700 head there, four to eight bucks lower. Uh, talk about uh, some of your individual quotes around the region. Now these are nothing to sneeze at and these are not lower in all these regional locations. How about Torrington livestock markets, Torrington, Wyoming, 77 head, 581 pound steers, Bring $190. That's as high as we've seen uh, all spring so far. How about Pays in Billings, Montana? Public auction yard sold 83 head, 620 pound stalker steers at 179 and a quarter. That's likewise. That's that's near the top. Uh, how about Stockman's Livestock Market in Yankton, South Dakota? Now you know they had their big fat cattle sale that was. $10 higher than what they're expecting to pay, uh, uh, buy cattle for in the country this week and, and we'd love to talk about that. We love fat cattle auctions. Stockman's and Yankton has a hell of a feeder cattle auction too. Check out 174 head, 765 pound feeder steers, 154.35. At the best quote that I saw anywhere on Wednesday and your Zach Tran top quote for the day come out of Bloomfield Livestock Market with Roman Schooley there in Bloomfield, Iowa, 64 head, 835 pound steers, 150 bucks smooth. And that's your feeder flash for Thursday.